British Columbia will always be synonymous with steelhead. The majestic BC rivers that meander their way to the ocean, with spectacular white-capped mountains in the distance and banks lined with thick, dense forests, add so much to the mystique of steelhead. Famous names that will bring hopes and memories to so many steelhead anglers around the world. The Bulkley. The Maurice. The Skeena. To name just a few. I don't think any steelhead angler can tell you exactly why these fish are so cherished. Everyone is a treasure and each is so individual. In size, marking, presence and temperament. Especially temperament. The wild steelhead that come back year after year to spawn high up in the Canadian tributaries are the most spectacular fish I've ever had the pleasure to cast a fly at. I've been lucky enough to fish a few of these rivers over the years, but I yearn to be back here just as soon as I've left. Today we're heading for a short exploratory trip to the most mystical of all the steelhead rivers, the Babeen. It's early season and the river has just opened, so we are unsure if the steelhead have reached the runs and pools of the Babeen yet. I guess we will find out soon. I struggle to contain my excitement as I join the team early in the morning and we await the arrival of the helicopter. We pack our gear quickly and leave from the lawn of the Frontier Far West Lodge in Smithers. The helicopter today will take us around 30 minutes to reach the Babian River. Fishing the Babian is a lifelong ambition for me and anticipation for what lies ahead today is overpowering. I think it's only steelhead anglers that can really understand the draw of these special rivers. We pass the bulkly below us and I'm astonished by the colour of the river from the air as the emerald green water sparkles in the sunlight. It's a fascinating journey over the forest-covered mountains as we make the trip almost in silence. The awe of the views through the large windows is consuming as we await our first glimpse of the Babine. The helicopter starts to drop its altitude as we sense we're getting close to our destination. At last I can see the river below and quickly the Babeen Steelhead Lodge comes into clear view. It's not until you see your water you can make a judgement on how the day might unfold. Today we find the Babeen in perfect condition and our expectations and hopes to the day rise significantly. I feel my dream of a steelhead from the Babeen River is close to becoming reality. But I need to remember these fish can be really difficult to catch, so I need to keep my emotions under control. seen from the lodge to the upper runs of the Babian River. 
The water still holds that deep green colour with a tint of discoloration. Perfect conditions for swinging flies for steelhead. We're in good spirits and our anticipations are high as we take in the beauty of our surroundings. It's not long before Jeremy is into a decent steelhead. I can sense by his reaction on the strain on the rod and reel that this is a big fish. He takes his time and doesn't rush it. He concentrates on anticipating the fish's next move, recovering line only when the fish allows. This is very good angling. This is an enthralling battle, and Jeremy keeps his calm even when the fish is close in. He works it in slowly towards the waiting net, but the fish is having none of it, and runs hard back out to the river. Jeremy works the fish back in, and this time there's no escape in Corwin's net. Jeremy's face is obvious and it is well earned. This is the most spectacular steelhead I've ever seen. 17 pounds and absolutely perfect in every way. This is the fish of a lifetime from a very special river. is simply a stunning stretch of water to cast a fly. The pace of the water is consistent through its length, resulting in a near perfect swing to cover the lines. Overlooked by the magnificent Babin Steelhead Lodge, an angler can expect to encounter a steelhead anywhere throughout the pool. A fish in the neck of the pool and a lively steelhead grabs the fly. There's an explosion on the surface and the fish takes a long run downstream. I recover line quickly and rein it to a short line but the fish is boiling on the surface. I'm worried I've been too quick trying to get this one in so I let him run a little bit. After a decent fight we get the fish to the net. Our guide Corwin is here at the perfect time to drop the net under the fish. It's done. My first Babine home pool steelhead. This one's a hen fish and I'm estimating this one to be around nine pounds. It's still got a lot of strength so we keep her wet for a quick photo and let her back in the water. I just love these fish. and picks up speed as we float downstream below the lodge. We're accompanied today by Tom Derry, who has provided a wealth of knowledge about the river throughout the day. We're grateful for his presence and his constant encouragement. He tells us we're heading to the lower runs, where he's had a few fish in the last day or two. We're hopeful we can do the same. It doesn't take long to get into a steelhead. The fish took the fly but midway across the river, smashing it off the surface. I've heard about the legendary strength of the Babin steelhead and I believe every word as I battle with this one. The fish produces stunning bursts of energy that pushes to break free, but the fly is holding strong for now. 
The fish senses Corwin's net and fights hard to put distance between itself and the net. I keep the drag tight and refuse to let it run again. Corwin calmly lowers the net below the prize. The fight is over. This is a gorgeous hen fish, we think about 12 pounds. Again, we keep her wet for a quick photo and set her on her way. Time is against us now, but I'm hoping we have time yet for another fish. I've backed up for a few yards to cover the same lie and quickly I've got hold of another fish. Having barely composed myself from the last one, my heart is beating fast as this fish explodes into action. It definitely makes a lot of sense to recover water because often there will be a few fish lying together. I think we've just proven that theory to be true. This one feels bigger than the last one and I'm determined to get this one into the net. I'm not going to rush it. I watched Jeremy's patience and technique earlier and I'm going to take the same approach. If the fish wants line, I'll let it run. If it doesn't, then I'll recover line without overstressing the fish. The last thing I want is a sudden run in a short line. That could be disastrous if I've experienced enough times in the past. Eventually we work it close to the net but it turns away. It's not beaten just yet. I play it in close and I feel it is tired. So now I hold it from running. It turns one last time and runs straight into the waiting net. This is a hen fish around the 14 pound mark. It's an absolute stunning example of a babine steelhead and it's without a doubt the best steelhead I've ever landed. The colours are just exquisite and it is completely unmarked. It still has a translucence in its fins so we know it's not been long in the river. Probably made its way from the ocean maybe a couple of weeks ago at most. We gently tease her from the net and allow her time to recover. She swims away strong to continue her journey upstream. It's the end of the day and it's time to return to the lodge and head back to Smithers. It's been a fantastic experience and we've all had steelhead and net. The pick being Jeremy's 17 pound fish early in the day. The Babine is such a special river and I look forward to getting back here as soon as I can. Hopefully I can catch a few more of these fabulous fish.